CataractCoach.com, resident case number 50 in a nonagenarian. So great job for so early in the learning curve. Now, a nonagenarian is a patient who is in their 90s. So an older patient here. Tissues can be weaker. Now, I've had many videos on Cataract Coach explaining how nonagenarians' tissues are different. They're a lot weaker. Now, here's a paracentesis. And look, this is normal, having some struggle to get inside the paracentesis. It happens to all of us. Now, be careful. Don't inject viscoelastic until you're sure the tip's in the paracentesis, in the AC, because you don't want to dissect the cornea and ophelium off. Now, here we go, starting off the case here. Let's see the incision look reasonable. Hey, did I tell you about retinarounds.com, our surgical channel for retina? You're going to learn a lot, I promise. If you're a resident, you better check out retina rounds, even if you're going to specialize in cataract or glaucoma or cornea. Now, getting a rex is done here. Now, you may notice we've sped the video. The video is at 4x, four times normal speed. So unedited, without speeding it up, this video was 30 minutes. Is it okay to do a 30-minute cataract case for case number 50? Yes, perfectly fine. That's to be expected here. Now, finishing up this case, that's going to take some time. We've got to be patient here. You can see the left side of the case there. You've got a little bit of a sponge there to help suck off fluid from the surface of the eye. Now, adjusting the microscope lighting to emphasize that red reflex. You can see the two Purkinje images. That is good. The two Purkinje images on the center of that cornea show you that this is the... Um, coaxial lighting. Now, here's the paraxial also. You have all three lights on at the moment. So what are you going to do here? So hydro dissection. Let's do nice and easy. Keep in mind with nonagenarians, the capsular support is going to be a lot weaker. So you got to be careful. here. You're going to have a lower endothelial cell count to begin with. Remember, our coronal endothelial cell count declines with age. Like everything else, it's better to be young. There are no 90-year-olds who have the coronal endothelial cell count of a healthy 25-year-old. None. So keep that in mind. Now, I liked some hydrodissection, but I wish it would spin more. Because you know the saying, if it does not spin, you will not win. But I think it's spun enough, but I'd rather do a little more spinning. Here comes a phaco probe. And then now, coming in, all right, let's, let's see, cleaning up. See, the eye is not a primary. Get the eye down. I want those Purkinje images in the center of the cornea. And it's harder to do that sometimes when you're sitting temporal. I'm sorry, superior instead of temporal. I'd rather use a temporal. Now... There goes the chopper. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's, that's a, a big chopper. You better, better make sure where you're placing it. So buzzing with the phaco probe here. Okay, hold the nucleus. Get that chopper around. See how the visualization is a little tough here? Again, that's a little bit of a scary maneuver there, but that's a nice crack. Nice chop. You did it. When you have all the fluid accumulating and pooling on the surface of the eye, it really makes your view difficult. And so you see, again, surgeon here struggling a little bit. And we have spent the video up to 4X, by the, mind you, 4X right here. So buzz with the Fago probe, get a purchase on it, get that chopper going around. That's pretty good. Now, I can tell this is case 50. You're certainly under case 100. So this is okay. It takes some time to learn. But again, if this, a case like this, I would tell you, maybe you're better off doing like a stop and chop, debulking a little bit more. See how the eye again doesn't stay in primary. I want the Purkinje light to stay in the center of the cornea the entire case. So that's a good chop. Now, you heard, certainly have great hands. For case 50, and it took you 30 minutes, you obviously know some principles of chop. You know how to move within the eye. You got a good incision. You got a good erexus. It's okay. I, I'm happy with that. Draping's tolerable. But again, a lot to learn here. Getting these pieces out nice and easy. That's a huge chopper. In fact, your chopper looks like a muscle hook to me. It looks like it's just too long of a chopper. So more viscoelastic is good to protect the cornea endothelium. I like that. There's that mega chopper again. Now, why would you sit superior instead of temporal? Again, sometimes it's how your professors are teaching. If you're doing case 50, you're obviously being taught by a professor. I like to sit temporal. I think it's a lot easier, better access. And remember, the temporal limbus is farther from the visual axis than the superior limbus. The superior limbus is very close to the visual axis. Now, some people like it because then it hides the incision up under the eyelid, but if you have a nicely constructed incision, it shouldn't be an issue. So a temporal is my preference. So again, taking these pieces down, I like how bringing them up to the iris plane. Now again, a little bit of bounce of the iris, a little bit of bounce in the anterior chamber. A good maneuvering, by the way, of rotating that around. So, again, smaller pupil case. For case 50, you, you chose a challenge. I'm glad you're testing your skills and pushing your skills to their better, 
you know, abilities by doing these tougher cases. Not a genarian, smaller pupil, a little bit tougher visualization. Again, these are all very valid things. You're doing a good job here, really good job. And let's aspirate these pieces down. Be careful of the capsule coming up too. And again, nice and easy, doing a good job. So remember, this is a 30-minute surgery. There's the epinuclear shell coming out. Nice and easy, beautiful. Let's get that cortex cleaned up. So again, lots of little things we can improve on here. One that I'd really encourage you to do is just keeping the eye in primary the entire case. So here's the eye probe going inside the eye. I like how you lifted the incision, by the way, with the second instrument. That was great. Cleaning up the cortex. Again, remove the cortex carefully. Make sure that you're not going to see the edge of the rex is moving. That means zinor breakage. You don't want that. So nice and easy on the cortex cleanup. And then let's get the lens in. Now, for a 90-year-old, you got to ask yourself, too, what, did the, what was the patient's preoperative fraction? If they were at all... Close to emetropia or slightly minus, maybe leave the patient a little minus. If a nine-year-old's not really driving anymore, wouldn't you rather be minus one or minus 0.5 in a nine-year-old instead of absolute plano? Yeah, I think so. But then again, if you were a nine-year-old and you had spent your whole life as a plus three hyperope, you probably don't want it myopic. In that case, I'd aim to leave you just about plano. And so here at the end, cleaning it up nicely. I like the second-hand use of expanding the pupil, pushing it aside so you can see. But again, at your level, case 50, you're probably better off learning how to use iris hooks or a pupil expansion ring if you need it. In this case, I think you did a fine job without needing it, and I wouldn't put one in either. So here comes our cohesive viscologic filling of the capsular bag. You lost a little bit of it there, a little bit of iris prolapse too. So be careful there. Let's see the lens going in, delivering it nicely. Okay, I take that. And now let's get that lens open up in the capsular bag. Looks like a single piece of monofocal acrylic lens. That looks great. And then let's finish up the case here. So beautifully done. Again, let's, let's talk about what should we work on. Number one, okay, we got to fix the draping. The draping was okay, but not great. Suture at the end, good idea, by the way. Uh, the incisions were okay. The rexus was okay. I not staying in primary was a little bit of an issue. I don't like your choice of chopper, but hey, that's your choice if you like it. It's kind of big to me. And then sometimes chopper placement there was a little bit iffy on my end. But again, you've got great hands. Don't worry about the speed or the time. Take your time. Make the surgery as pretty and as controlled as possible. And then efficiency comes later, I promise you. But you have great hands. Keep up the good work. And just by the fact that you submitted the video for evaluation tells me you really care about your work and you're going to become an accomplisher. And keep up the good work. And remember, you definitely need to be subscribed to retinarounds.com as well as your favorite, cataractcoach.com.